You just never know what you're going to come across at a garage sale. Today, we're transforming this old tea caddy into a versatile planter for indoors or out. Color outside the lines. But before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more creative DIY content. So let's dive right into the tutorial. After we give the tea caddy a thorough cleaning, we're going to tape it where we don't want to apply liquid rubber. If using this for outdoors, you're going to want to drill some drainage holes in the bottom, but if you're only using it for indoors, you can skip this step. Keep some water handy to dip the brush into right after use, because liquid rubber is water-based and you can save your brush that way. Brush on one or two coats according to the package directions and then remove the tape. Now we're ready for paint. Here I'm using a milk paint. I'm using this Argyle stencil by Old Sign Stencils and I've used it before. I'll link to another project where I used it. Look for it in the right hand corner. I'm ready to add my second color now and I'm using a color called Chantilly Lace and it's slightly thinned down because I want it slightly transparent and you want a very dry brush. I'm offloading onto a paper towel so that it's good and dry and I'm going to take a paint stick and just brush it on and I can see it's just a touch too wet so I'm going to go back to the paper towels and then give that another try. You want it very very dry and that looks good to me. So now I'm starting in the middle and working out towards the edges and just swirl it on. Now, I don't want to get paint on here and I actually did get a little dab, I think. I forgot to cover it up with, I've cut myself pieces of transparency here and I'm just gonna cover that up I'll just move this over here. Oops, wrong one. You want to cover up the black because we're doing white. So I'm going to move it into position, cover that. I'll take my second one and just pop that right over. And that way I can't accidentally get paint onto the black areas. So let's just see if I've got enough paint on here or if I have to go back in. I think that's okay. And you can both swirl and pounce. I find that pouncing really gets into the corners. And I am getting some shedding of my brush, so just watch for that and try to pick them out if you can. That looks great. And maybe we'll even get this third one here. And let's see how that looks. As I release my clamps, I'm just gonna clip it to my clamp here so that it's ready to go for next time. And there you have it. Now I'm going to move on to the, towards the end to complete this row. I'm all set up and ready to go for the rest of the row and as you can see my transparencies are now in place so I can't accidentally get white onto the black areas. I've got a dry brush starting in the middle. I'm moving towards the outside and just be sure to hold down with your fingers. That really helps prevent the paint bleed underneath your stencil. We've also got an entire video on how to prevent paint bleed, which we'll link to in the upper right corner. And again, starting in the middle so that you offload most of the paint there and then move towards the edges. So now I can remove the plastic protectors. And the reason you want to clip it is because the underneath does not have wet paint on it, so you don't want to be putting it face down with wet paint onto your work because you could accidentally smudge. So that's a tip for you. When we come back, we're going to be using a slightly different white paint called Icicle White so that you do see the contrast between the lighter transparent white and the darker stripes that are going to come through. I've got my diagonal overlay in place and I'm simply going to swirl the paint on as before. And when the brush runs dry, just reload and just finish where you left off. Just be sure to get the brush good and dry. I find that when going over a chalky surface, such as this milk paint, that it does tend to absorb a lot of the paint as opposed to going over a more glossy surface. It just sucks it right up. 
So you might find that you have to reload your brush a little bit more than normal. The first little bit is now complete and I'm going to remove the clamps just to check it out. And that's looking great. Glam it up for the holidays with these gorgeous poinsettias and you've got a beautiful seasonal display. If you enjoyed this project, let us know in the comments and don't forget to check out our upcycling category for more inspiration. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe and for our regular viewers, hit that like button. Until next time, happy crafting and happy holidays!